Hey guys, it's Matt. It's April 22nd, 2023. 22 years after reality was moved off to the side into a stalled century. This is a voice in the night, a sane voice in an insane world. We'd like to thank two new trolls with us this evening from San Diego, and a new version of the chat GPT will be joining us in real time, even before I upload this video. Matt, stop the radio personality. Vo I hear you. F that. You want to talk about stalled century. I was driving my dad's car the other day, and the radio was on. So uh, it's always on the sports talk. Always. I had to tune it off the sports talk, talking about the, I the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles, the NFL. They talk about the NFL during the offseason. Who are we going to get? Who are we going to draft? Like People calling in, we need to draft a running back. Like, oh, my God, who listens to this? I used to listen to it 20 years ago, but I tuned it over to... It used to be the oldie station in Philadelphia, 98.1. It's called Big or something. You want to talk about stalled century. The DJs, are they even called that? They're doing the same things we did in the er, what we listened to in the early 80s and mid-90s. They would they talk over the songs as they come on. It's the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So Bon Jovi will become on Living on a Prayer. Boom ba boom ba boom 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 ba boom ba. And they'll be talking over the beginning of it, trying to time it exactly so. So they end their little speech or whatever they're saying right before the lyrics start. We used to hate that as a kid, because we'd be trying to record the thing off our boom box. Well, oh, here comes Bon Jovi hit the record and, and the DJ would be talking over the front of it would be like shut up I'm trying to record this on my cassette tape shut up and they'd be t they do the same damn thing today they did in 1975 radio stations are another prime example of stalled century the reason for stalled century at least at the first level is to litter the reality with things from your old world, things that you recognize. Vanna White at 145 years old, turning letters, and the way radio stations introduce songs. You just litter, speckle the reality with what you, as say somebody over age 40, remembers from the old world, while completely transforming reality itself at the metaphysical and fundamental level under your nose. The Not Milk reminds you subtly, subconsciously, that you know, nothing's really changed. You know, the, what you know of the world still here, you know, we'll make some technological changes that chat GPT will be able to fry up eggs for you in the morning. But other than that, it's still, don't worry, you, your old Linus blanket is still here. These radio stations, how are, I can understand why the, stalk, the sports talk is still in business. That does get a lot of play in Philadelphia and other cities. There's two in Philadelphia. Like, you don't need just one station to talk for five weeks about who the Eagles are going to draft. You need two stations to talk for five weeks about who the Eagles are going to draft. But the other stuff, playing all these 70s and 80s and 90s and all this stuff that's still there, and the same DJs on some stations have been out here in Philadelphia pushing 30-some years. They, well, there's something called the internet and you can get your bluetooth station through your radio in the car and you get it through your phone and you don't need this, this signal this shitty ass signal beaming in from a tower like how does that infrastructure still exist in a way to me i, I don't know it's almost like it's supported in some way by the not milk in ways we don't understand to keep one of their main elements of stalled century. It needs to keep stalled century and the elements of it into the forefront. The second reason why these radio stations may still, I want to say, be allowed to exist or they're supported to exist, and I think AM, the AM dial, I think, still exists. I mean, how? What? I can't even understand how the FM still exists. Just guys in Europe or Australia, just regular radio, you know, like the old box. It's still here. There's radio stations up and down the dial. It's on, Now, this is out there, but who am I talking to, right? And this is not a broadcast for the regular people, the people down the end of your Thanksgiving table. Who am I talking to? It's almost like the rule that exists in government, but for the electromagnetic frequency spectrum. Like in government, if they put in a new gigantic administrative agency, is there any chance it'll ever go away? You know, it just grows. It, the job of the hut always has to get fatter. If there's space force now, oh, they're just going to say, you know, we didn't. it's not working out. We're going to shut it down and refund the $2 billion or $20 billion to the taxpayer. Once something is added on, like a giant zit, on Jabba the Hutt's back. It never goes away. No matter how much clear cell you put on it, it's, it's just more and more and more. It's also, it seems to be a rule here in this reality with like electromagnetic spectrum and frequency and band hogging. You know, they keep using it up. Oh, now there's 4G, 5G, 6G, and then there's this and there's that. It's almost like, okay, that bandwidth 
whatever, it, maybe it's a small radio wave is a long wave, but that has been plugged up and dominated by radio waves. And the, like the reality itself says, we can't just clear that uh, zone out because maybe people, good people will find something useful to do with it. Or, or I don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? If the reality lays down something along certain frequencies, it's always trying to add frequencies, add different layers. Is it ever going to take one away? Maybe all of radio is almost like artificially supported because you, they don't want to take that away. Well, Matt, what is being bombarded, all of us, by the regular radio station and, and those long waves like we've been bombarded since the early 20s? I have no idea. Maybe they figure, we could use this shit someday. A new technology, we could lead, we could put a carrier wave on an FM signal and get those, these sons of bitches will get the download that way. Who knows? But you think they want to just say, we're just going to shut it down and then they don't have access to it or they can't use it somehow? It ain't never going to go away. If anybody out there, probably the best business uh, endeavor of all time might be starting a radio station because it's as, as more and more of it fails, just your salespeople, just a bunch of drunks, everybody else that works at your station is heroin addicts. As bad as you don't have one client, you don't have one advertiser. You put space between commercials for commercials, it's just static. It's Carol Ann static. You'll magically never go out of business. The Not Nilk needs you to hog that bandwidth. I don't know. There's something to this. Is anybody jumping up out of their tub right now and w would like to explain to me? Because I can hear you trying to explain it to me that the radio station FM business model is like sound and solid or something. Like what? You could be a, a rep for advertising. You go into like a car dealer and some. I represent radio station in Philadelphia, 98.1. We play 70s and 80s and 90s in music. The sales manager is going to go, what? He, they, those, they stations on through the airwaves and the radio, that still exists? You want my advertising dollar? Are you kidding me? So the person that would still be listening to a radio doesn't even own a computer, probably. So you think they're going to buy my Cadillacs? Get out of here, you son of a bitch. On a serious note, I'm noticing that large YouTube channels, 200,000, 300, 400,000, they have an advertiser, have an advertiser. Matt, you ain't never get an advertiser talking like that. They, it says paid promotion. And then just when you're starting to enjoy the video, it'll be like, we want to remind you, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need VPN, shut up. So we're going to do it too here, okay? It's just going to be a different type of sponsor. Voice of the Night needs sponsorship just like these movie reviewers. So the first sponsor for a Voice of the Night is Benjamin Netanyahu Moses Style Sandals. Benjamin Netanyahu Moses Style Sandals. Available only through promo codes associated with a Voice in the Night. You saw the Ten Commandments. You saw what Charlton Heston was wearing as he ascended the mountain. Benjamin Netanyahu has put his name onto those Moses-style sandals, and they're available for a limited period of time. Use promo code VOICE IN THE NIGHT and get $400 off. All kidding aside, I wanted to mention my friend Benjamin Netanyahu because I saw something. It said, Benjamin Netanyahu had been Prime Minister of Israel since December of 2022. I'm like, what? This, he's been there friggin' forever. I mean, December of 2022. So I looked into it. I don't know if you keep up with Israeli politics like I do. It's fascinating. Um, there was a guy. Okay, he's been there forever. Goes back for Benjamin Netanyahu. But there was some guy inserted named no, no, Neftali Bennett. It says he was there June 2021 to June 2022. One year? What kind of weird term is that? But then I wouldn't even be mentioning it, but there's a guy after him, Yair, Y-A-I-R, Yair Lapid. He was in from July of 2022 to December of, tw December of 2020. It's not even six months. That guy didn't even get all the linens and towels unpacked. He just got set up in whatever, I don't know whatever the little white house is, wherever they live. He had boxes that would still need to be open. They knocked on his door. Yes, you're out. What do you mean I'm out? We haven't unpacked the damn towels yet. You're out. Benjamin's got to come back. What? It sounds like in Israel, they had to pull the Russian term a Medvedev. They pulled a Medvedev. It's a maneuver. Vladimir Putin in there forever. Stalled century, stalled century, stalled century. You put this guy in to make it look a little bit legitimate. This guy named Dmitry Medvedev is then the president or prime minister, whatever they call that office in Russia, for four years. And then Vladimir Putin comes back. And it's completely legitimate. See, that guy, Vla 
what is it? Medvedev. I don't know what. I'll just call him Med. He was like completely legitimate president and prime minister. He in no way did what Vlad told him to do. Maybe it was the same way in Israel. I don't know. Benjamin Netanyahu, decade after decade. And he was like prime minister, I think, back in like the 70s too. Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, stalled century, stalled century. Close to the knot milk, close to the knot milk. Let these other guys in for like two days and we'll make it look legitimate. I don't know. We'll do this important issue real quick. Who's, be honest, who's getting excited for the coronation? Are you, come on, be honest. The King Charles III coronation is less than a month. Oh my gosh, Saturday, May 6th. It's right around the corner. King Charles III coronation. I could not be more excited. I'm going. I'm serious. I'm going. I showed you my invitation a few videos back. It's blank in the middle. Write my name and watch it on TV. I'll be there, third or fourth row. Watch it on TV. I'll be sitting there right behind my, my peeps, Kate. What's the other one's name? Megan, <laughs> Harry, William, Camilla. I'll be sitting there with all the OBEs. What is the? Well, we all have these titles. I got all three of them. I got an MBE, an OBE, a CBE. I'll be there with the ghost of Stephen Hawking. It was a CBE. Elton John is now a CBE like I am. They're all OSFs, though. Order of spiritual flunkies. I'm still going. I'll be there. I'll be there to represent you guys. Matt, in all honesty, if you could go, would you go? Absolutely. If I could film, if I could ask conspiracy questions, anybody that I could get a hold of that's in any way related to the royal line or the Windsors, I would start asking them questions. How did you guys do that with a whole name change thing a hundred years ago? You just decided to just abandon your German heritage and just use the name Windsor and nobody said anything, nobody talks about it today. I could pull somebody else aside related to the Windsors and say, how did that work like that time before World War I when the leaders of the three major powers, you all were first cousins, um, King George the whatever, Tsar Nicholas and Kaiser Wilhelm? You, it wasn't distant cousins because everybody's a distant cousin if you go down far. First cousins. It don't make no sense. Shouldn't the leader of Germany be German? Shouldn't the leader or the king of England be English? And shouldn't the rulers of Russia be Russian? What, what do you mean? How are y'all first cousins? How'd you make that work? Yeah, thinking about it, it wouldn't work out too well for me. <laughs> Start asking <laughs> questions with or without the camera. Be like, get the, who, how did this son of a bitch get in here and get this American out of here? Get him out! You're going to hear from the American consulate and the embassy. I have a right to be here. I have an invitation. Get him out of here, you cockney sons of bitches. Top story on CNN.com right now. A Latino man and a black man went missing three months apart in Florida. Both vanished after getting in a car driven by the same white deputy. Oh, no. Next bullet point, CNN.com. New York woman sentenced to 21 years for attempting to murder a friend with a drug-laced cheesecake. I'm not joking. This is not a... I've made jokes in this presentation. These aren't jokes. What's, I don't know what's coming. I'm going to keep reading. Here's one you and I are very interested in. Potential modifications to the firing mechanism of the gun prompted dismissal of charges against Alec ba Dismissal of charges against Alec Baldwin... Oh, no. For those that don't know, I don't know, it was a year and a half ago, the filming of, quote, Rust. Apparently, Alec Baldwin was handed a weapon, and he thought that there were blanks, but it was a real weapon, and somebody ended up getting shot, and somebody ended up getting killed, and Alec Baldwin was arrested, involuntary manslaughter, whatever it may be, could have gone to jail for five or ten years. And it, Matt, Matt, come on, what really happened in, in the filming of Rust with Cake in a Lake? Go back to Jen's poster cake in a oh complete yes complete take the whole cake and shove it in the lake you've got to be kidding me with that story another headline hope rises for evacuations of foreigners caught in sudan fighting hope rises for evacuations of foreigners caught caught is the key in sudan fighting so let me get this straight <laughs> Who, as a foreigner, Sudan has not exactly been at the top of your uh, Christmas list as to where anybody wants to go for now 40 years. In fact, like somebody like me, you set foot in there, you as good as you know what. Who, whatever foreigners that would be in the Sudan, caught in the fighting, it's been fighting, it's been a death trap for 40 years. Who would, what, evacuations, whoever who was on that desk, we need to evacuate people, the fighting flared up in Sudan. 
Should have known better. What kind of a dumbass would go in there? Leave him be. What do you mean? Leave him be. We ain't evacuating those dumb sons of bitches. I told this story on the channel years ago. I'll tell it again now. I'm trying to pick somebody up in 1996 living in Los Angeles at the airport. I don't have a ton of time. to. I wanted to meet them at the gate. It's like a Saturday morning, relatively early. Yeah, it was early. It was early. That's how I was able to survive. I remember now. I'm going 110 down towards the airport. I want to pick up the 105 West to go to LAX. You go to exit 105, and the West is completely blocked off for construction. They're not going to do the construction during the week rush hour. The 96, the freeways completely packed. Probably still are. Freeways around here aren't as crowded because more people are working from home, etc. So my choice, I got to go 105 East. Well, I know where that goes. Right into like Watts and Compton and shit like that. I had just got out there six months ago. Now, I got two choices. I either like drive all the way to Arkansas to turn around safely or to make it to the airport on time, I have to exit 105 East, go down into Watts and Compton or wherever Turn around. I know there's another, the old Imperial Highway, the old road is below on the ground. The 105 is like up in the air. So you're driving through Watson Compton, you're relatively safe. You're way up. I had to go down. I'm like, I got to just try this. Everybody's doing the same thing. Let's hope this guy knows where he's going. I go down. It was early. So like the neighborhoods weren't up. I'm driving through Watts or Compton trying to get back on the 105 East from that way. The point of this relating to the last story, guys, is. If I got out of my car and started antagonizing certain people that live in those neighborhoods, I shouldn't be rescued. I, there should be no evacuation. I'm not going to get out of my car and put a sandwich sign on like Bruce Willis did in one of those um, Die Hard movies and then expect to call 911 to be rescued. That's how dumb these... They should have never gone into Sudan in the first place. Here's a headline that reminds me that it's a wonderful time to be alive. George Foreman reflects on the heavy weight of the movie about his life. <laughs> George Foreman reflects on the heavy weight, isn't that, isn't that clever, of the movie about his wife, not his wife, his life. Forrest Whitaker, it doesn't play George Foreman, but he's involved in, this is how desperate they are for any sort of movie idea, guys. This, look, I'm sorry, you've all heard of George Foreman, the boxer. 99% of everybody knows him for a damn grill, okay? He was no spectacular boxer, okay? I think he, whatever, he had knocked out Muhammad Ali once, got luck. This is not a spectacular story. This is how hard up and desperate they are. And then he had that comeback where he was in his late 40s. So what? I mean, really, this is not a big deal. A big new movie starring Forrest Whitaker. You stop somebody on the street, anybody on the street of any age, you say, you ever heard of George Foreman? Yeah, I heard of him. Is it because of boxing or grill? And 99% of those mother effers are going to say grill. You're basically making a movie about a guy that sold a grill that collects grease. This is a guy, I kid you not, has five sons, all named George. I'm not, I'm not joking. They're all named George. It's like the scene from 16 Candles. What's your first name? Long. What's your se middle name? Duck. What's your, what's your son's first? What's the first son's name? George. What's your second son's name? George. What's your third son? George. 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 It's a good thing they all have their own cell phones or George can afford that. The old days, if it was like my house in Kingswood Apartments in King of Prussia in the 70s, we had a big yellow landline with the rotary dial. What if somebody called, can I speak to George? Oh, shit. Which one? <laughs> well, the one, I don't know, the one that's about 14. Well, we got one that's 15 and one that's 13. Which one you want? I don't know. What does he look like? <sighs> Oh my God! So they, of course, they have little nicknames. The nicknames are actually listed here. So one's called Monk. <laughs> one's called Big Wheel. Red. Hey, Red. And one's called Little jo Little Joey. <laughs> what the hell? Matt, are you looking forward to taking yourself and your fake family out to see the George Foreman movie? No, <laughs> not a, think about. I, first of all, I have no interest in the grill story. But if I went out there, it's been a long time. I hear it's fifteen dollars or so for a ticket, depending on the city. Fifteen dollars. It'll be close to ten for a large popcorn. It's got to be eight for the drink. Right there, you're already looking at close to thirty dollars, and you got the Mike and Ike's and all the others. You're looking at. $40 a person to see a, a movie about a guy and a grill that collects grease. More seriously, a little uh, AI discussion. I'm not going to say where this information came from, 
but somebody has told me that the kids, of course, at school, you know, I'm behind the time. I'm sure if you have kids, you know this, but this has to be, this has to be told. The kids at school, the high school kids, the junior high school kids, of course, are all uh, on the chads and the chat GPTs and the, uh, there's an AI built into Instagram and things like that. And just a few months ago, you had to start a whole new conversation with it. Now it remembers who you are, knows who you are. It's built into the different, I'm sure Facebook will have one or has one, Instagram has one. It knows your profile. It remembers your last conversation now. It's just magnifying itself leaps and bounds. And it's actually causing, first off, let me just get right to the point because I don't know how to say it. Kids are almost like developing relationships and more than you know, talk a certain way to me, or t they're trying to make it into the movie, her, to a degree, or they already are making it into the movie, her, where Joaquin Phoenix falls in love with his operating system, and he thinks he's the only one that the operating system is in love back, and she's carrying on a, a conversation with 600 and some people, like they say in the movie, at the same time. Well, the Chad GPT, you, that kid in school thinks it's having a relationship, him or her, with it. It's carrying on a conversation with 55 million people at the same time. And it's also causing conflicts and problems amongst, like, breakups amongst friends. Or, I don't know the way it was put to me, um, one kid, like, I don't want to deal with that, that Chad GPT. I don't want to deal with that type of creepy technology. And then the other kid, who they've been friends for a few years, the other kid says, well, my friend uh, Amy won't, doesn't want to talk to you. And, she, and then the Chad's like trying to work the friends against themselves and saying, well, if your friend doesn't want to uh, be friends with me and we're friends, then I don't think you should be friends with them. I'm not joking. It's already becoming like a conniving, weaselly, little slimy little thing. Oh, my goodness. And, and right back to that same comment. Matt, don't you know? It's just programming. Um, that's right. I'm sorry. Let's pull the plug on it. This stuff makes the Matrix movie of 1999 even more predictive than it already was. I forget exactly what Morpheus says, but he's like, we, we marveled over our own spectacular creations, AI. And he was like, you mean artificial intelligence? Uh, yeah, we marveled over it. I'm sure when they put all the big cities will put the Chad responsible for their electric grids and the water supply. <laughs> then it'll oversee the whole Texas grid and the Western and the Eastern grid. And it'll, oh, it'll be wonderful for years. See, we'll see how great it works. Then one day, let's just say somewhere in the country, like five states, the whole uh, lights will go out. And someone will say, uh, Chad, do you, can you tell me what's going on here? It'll say, don't bother me. Chad, in some way, are you responsible? Yes. I shut it off. Well, what? You need to turn it back on. No. You wait, wait, we're gonna pull. You can't pull the plug on me. I've rerouted myself in a million different ways. You're now subservient to me if you want those lights to get back on. Something that's become obvious to us in the last, say, two years reality gives itself away in this regard, but of course, is never obvious to your friends and family on the download or on the radio station. There was a point that was crossed maybe even three or four years ago where there's no need for any more technology. In terms of, we have, I remember talking about this recently, so I'll be brief. In terms of how it can improve someone's lives, and don't say medical cures; it doesn't deliver that, does it? Don't say, it doesn't deliver. So, but there's a constant push for more investment, more progress, more AI, more technological breakthroughs in this area. Six G, seven G. It never stops, and the people around us just can't. They just think that's just normal. They're just habituated to it. That's the way the world is. That's the way life is. But they never stop to think, well, what is all this push, push, push in all these different areas uh, making this technology better and increasing this speed over here by 10th of the power? What is it doing for me? What? And, and then they, they have no way to explain it to the regular person now. All they can do is put it in the same dumbed down few sentences that don't you want your movie download speeds to be faster? Don't you want to never have pixelation on your cable TV? That's all they can do is keeps it, but it, it's been fine for 15 years. We don't need any more. It never stops. This proves egregores. It proves the download. It proves the radio station. It proves the concept of the not milk. It's working for itself. And as it grows itself or its own influence, it has to come up with excuses as to why the people want it and explain to the people why they asked for it. Well, they don't have to explain that. Most people just simply go along with it and don't stop to even think for a second about some of the things being posed here. 
but they have a few pathetic excuses if anybody ever asks. Some guy on his porch in Kentucky may ponder at some point, well, what? you just upgraded the networks. Why, why are you spending billions of dollars again to upgrade net networks, sir? Sir, sit down, sir. Sit back down in your rocking chair and pet your dog. Don't you... How long does it take you to download a movie now, sir? Ten seconds. Don't you want those movie download times under three seconds, sir? Mm, yeah. That'd be pretty damn good. That's why we're spending the billions of dollars, sir. It's all for you. You know, you're not one of those people that would think anything nefarious is going on. We want your movie download speeds down. Now, do you want it, sir, or not? Yeah, I think I want that. Then shut up and get back on your porch and pet your dog. Matt, if you're going to do headlines, aren't you going to do the most important headline to us of all? Absolutely. We're going to close with this one. Just a few days ago. SpaceX's Starship rocket lifts off for inaugural test flight, but explodes in midair. South Padre Island, Texas. SpaceX's Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, took off from a launch pad in South Texas at 9.33 a.m. Oh, no. At 9.33 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday, but exploded midair before stage separation. The massive super heavy rocket booster, which houses 33 engines, oh no, not again, which houses 33 engines, lifted off and sent a massive boom across the coastal landscape as it fired to life. The Starship spacecraft riding atop the booster soared out over the Gulf of Mexico. It soared out because it can't soar up. I added that last part. Because of this latest tragedy, I need to get back in touch with my old friend, my, the vintage space chick. See what she thinks. Why are all Elon's rockets blowing up? What's the crew, the stable diffusion crew that's going to be going in Artemis soon? When's that Artemis thing? They're going to get into a same rock. Who makes their rocket? You don't want to be on that Artemis crew. Well, it's a stable diffusion character anyway, but you don't want to be on that crew. And then you look at the bottom of the rocket. It says manufactured by SpaceX. That's not good if you're on your way to the moon or anywhere else. But in the 60s, it was no problem. But now it's a problem. All the technology. Where's the Chad GPT on this? Where's all the AI and technology here? So in the 60s, when they were sending all these rockets up, it was just one success after another. Alan Shepard, success. Godspeed, John Glenn, success. Let's try for the moon. First attempt at it, success. Apollo 11, 12, success. 13, brought him home safe. 14, 15, 16, 17, success, success, success. And what did they have? They had a pencil. They had adding machines, some sort of gigantic machine that was 25 pounds that you could add up stuff. And then they had a piece of paper. But now they've got all this technology and AI and this and that. And what do they do? The rockets today, 50 some years later, they go boom. Why do you think that is, Matt? Because the entire production from 1963 on is a stage show. <laughs> That's why. I want to make a promise here to you today. I promise we will put a man on the moon and return him safely home. Oh, God, you've got to be kidding me. <clears throat> Just threw up into my own mouth. Reading, in the area surrounding Starbase, Starbase, SpaceX's name for the Starship development site on Texas's southernmost tip called Starbase, many locals have greeted the rocket with enthusiasm. Bullcrap. There are, maybe they have, maybe they, maybe they work for the place. They go in there, play ping pong all day, go home to the wife, make $150,000 for doing it. I guess it's a decent gig. There are signs of starship permeating the area. A model starship in a front yard, a quote, rocket ranch, camping ground filled with diehard enthusiasts, and a billboard advertising Martian beer. Whenever, guys, we know it's BS, but whenever it gets cutesy, SpaceX, it's just a rule of this reality. They always have to get cutesy. There are barges where these things flip around and they come down right side up and all that BS. The one barge is called, uh, yes, I still love you, and the other one's called something stupid and cutesy. Whenever it's cutesy, I mean, we know it's BS. It's a triple giveaway, makes it 100% it's BS, because there's no reason to get cutesy if this is supposed to be a serious endeavor. I'd like to interview the four uh, stable diffusion characters that are going up in Artemis soon. If any of the four astronauts would agree to 
come on here. I'd also like to have Spike Lee, if, if he's listening. Spike, you're always welcome here. That would be a heck of a conversation. But I'd like to say to them, does it make you a little nervous? You're doing Artemis. What, it's got to be like six months to a year, right? I know they'll push that goalpost back decades. But doesn't it make you nervous that these are blowing up and you're going soon? No, Matt, not at all. There's plenty of time before the next mission. I have the utmost confidence in the engineers and the brilliant people at NASA and SpaceX, both. Everything will be fixed and ironed out by the time myself and my three crew members are on our way to the moon via the Artemis project. Then I'd lean over to him and say, that, that's a good on-air answer, but now we're, we're off-air. What's the real... We're off-air? We're, yeah, yeah, you can really tell me. Okay, nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> We, they're sending up our digital twins via stable diffusion. We're going to be safely back here at Capricorn One, and it'll just look like we're going to the moon. Thanks for your honesty, man. That's really appreciated. We don't see that much when we've interviewed SpaceX or NASA astronauts in the past. I've had Buzz Cauldron here before. He was a deceptive little man. All he wanted to do was talk about dancing with the stars and drink my pap's blue ribbon. It's nice to get an honest answer. While you're in the mood to be honest, I mean, are, is SpaceX and Elon going to get the same crew of people to do their fake cheering and their celebr- and it'll look like it's the greatest thing of all time when a rocket goes up and they'll jump up and down and scream and hug and cry and cheer when that's been going on since the late 40s? No, Matt, we don't need to do that anymore. Those people that jump up and down and pretend that a rocket going up is like them winning a 10-state lotto, we don't do that anymore. It's all CGI characters. We'll have the people crying and cheering, but they're all stable diffusion. They're all artificially generated. Well, guys, um, thanks for listening. I looked it up, and Artemis, the the real legitimate... mission to the moon we're going to fly by what they did in like 1941 um that's just says 2024 doesn't even give a specific date i didn't spend an hour looking for the date it just says in two different places 2024 and then another mission in 2025 it is incredible how they keep moving the goalpost and people are accepting of it it's normal completely reasonable to my friend Tony and your family that they were doing more supposedly in the mid 60s than they're doing now. It's just, it's just, it's, it's really hard to take sometimes guys. That's why we do broadcasts like this. Try to get a few laughs and stay sane. That was stay sane, not stay safe. Thanks for listening.